In the words of Eric Spolstra, how about Jimmy Effin Butler? 40 points, 11 rebounds, 13 assists, a dominant triple-double performance to lead the Heat over the Lakers in Game 3, also 12-14 from the free-throw line, and did it on zero three-point attempts. Yeah, you think you need a three in today's NBA? You don't. I think Jimmy proved that last night. My favorite part, Jimmy saying post-game, we won. I could care less about a triple-double. I hope the next game I score zero, and y'all talk like y'all want to talk, and we win so I can come up here and say the exact same thing. That's real. That pretty much describes Jimmy Butler. All he cares about is winning. Not about the stat line, not about how many he scores, but like I said, he did score 40. So let's dive into the film, how he did it, how the Lakers can try to slow him down in game four. Make sure you follow Scott with Brian, YouTube, Twitter, after the video. First of all, obviously always does it a little bit with his defense. Taking the challenge against LeBron, slapping the ball out from behind, loves to get points off his defense. That's always been a staple of his game. And then LeBron's got to know when he drives in there in transition, Jimmy is constantly slapping down at the ball like he does here to get a piece of it, which again is going to lead Miami to get offense out of it. Then in terms of how he scored his 40 points, a lot of it was too easy like this. This is just Danny Green one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think he can guard him. The Lakers need to avoid that matchup. Anytime basically Jimmy sees anybody other than LeBron guarding him, he is in full-on attack mode, going to work, going to get a bucket in the paint. That's been his mentality almost all series. Even with LeBron guarding him, he's not that afraid, but I will say LeBron needs to do a better job than this, for example. One thing that LeBron can even take from his own personal experience. If you remember early in his career, guys would play so far off LeBron that sometimes it would allow him to get ahead of steam, coming down, driving, uh, and you would be so far off that it would end up hurting him. Look how far he is off of Jimmy Butler right here. That's going to allow Kelly Olynyk to set this super low screen right about at the free throw line. And even when LeBron goes over it, Jimmy Butler is just going to stop right on a dime. It's kind of right in between Dwight Switching on to him and LeBron continuing to pursue, but either way, that's a great bank shot. But again, LeBron needs to be more physical. He needs to get up into the ball, get up into Jimmy Butler, stop giving him that much of a cushion because that's way too easy to come off a screen like that. I think LeBron's given him too much respect. Speaking of respect, they do need to give him a lot more respect in transition. This is way too easy. He needs to see a wall getting back. Rondo doesn't need to be out here with Kendrick Nunn. Markeef can be in the paint. They need to show him more bodies. AD is lollygagging running back here. He needs to beat him back. doesn't matter that Olenek's back here. You stop the ball, not a man in transition. Again, that's too easy. When that's all Jimmy sees, one guy back there, he's going through you. 12 of 14, like I said, from the free throw line. Here, again, no wall built by the Lakers. LeBron not remotely close to being back. Lollygagging around in the backcourt. KCP, lazy running back. JR is the only guy back there. Jimmy's able to get by him for a layup. Here's what the Lakers really need to clean up. Are we switching or are we staying? Because give Eric Spolster credit. He saw something on film and the Heat took advantage of it. Pretty much every time they set this kind of step-up screen for Jimmy Butler, the screen setter would slip right out of it. So instead of setting the screen, Hero is just going to slip right out of it. Normally, when you say no screen, you say no switch. So if there's no screen here, LeBron should really keep fighting and stay on Jimmy Butler. But he interpreted this as a screen and expected Danny Green to switch this, which Danny Green doesn't really realize until a little bit too late, and Jimmy's passed him for a dunk. Again, they need to decide on these quick slips out of ball screens for Jimmy, are we switching or are we staying? Not exactly a ball screen here, but similar type deal. Jimmy is just going to fake the handoff back to none. Danny Green's going to go with none. You can't do that on a fake handoff. That's way too easy, to be honest. But again, these switches versus staying are giving them problems. Yet again, Markeith Morris on him here. Duncan Robinson, watch, it's just going to slip right out of the ball screen. These guys need to communicate and say, no screen, no screen, or slip, slip. 
especially if they think it's somebody like Hero or Robinson who love to slip out of these so that Markeith can stay on Jimmy Butler. Again, he's so worried about Duncan Robinson coming off that he already goes to switch and there's not even a screen set. This one, Jimmy realized he should have obviously shot this at the rim. But here again is going to be a play that defines Jimmy Butler because he's not going to sit around and feel sorry for himself for too long. Look at him continue to sprint back, get back in the picture. And then on a long rebound, he's going to go win the war for the ball and get fouled. The Lakers need to decide, do we really need to switch things like this? All right? So Hero, obviously a phenomenal shooter. Duncan Robinson, a phenomenal shooter. It's understandable why LeBron wants to switch this, and it looks like that's the Lakers' game plan. Make sure Hero doesn't have a shot coming off. Be ready to switch onto him right here and aggressive. But that does leave now Caruso matched up with Jimmy. He needs to do a much better job than this. They need to have a game plan. Caruso, Rondo, small guys like that get caught on him. They either need to be in the front or they need to be much more physical trying to get Jimmy out of the post. This is just way too easy for him to get to his strong right hand in the post. Again, you see that same exact switch. LeBron jumping out to switch on to Hero. Puts Danny Green back on Jimmy. Who's again going to go to his strong right hand. Better job there, finally, by KCP. No screen, so he stayed with him on the slip. But when he comes back and does actually set it, again, do they want to switch this? Do they want to keep getting LeBron off of Jimmy? They might have made it a little too easy for the Heat to do that. What you can do is have KCP hedge something the Heat are doing to avoid switches on LeBron when he's on offense so that he can stay with Tyler Hero and LeBron can get under the screen and continue to guard Jimmy Butler. Instead, they switch it, and Jimmy, again, when he doesn't have LeBron on him, his eyes light up. He's going to keep backing you down. He is so skilled in that mid-post area. Why? Why are we switching this? The screen's at near half court. LeBron could just go under this, and there's no reason to switch it. Really skillful finish. Wrong foot jump, throws off Markeith's timing, gets Jimmy a tough bucket, but LeBron's got to fight through that and stay on him. KCP, when he was the matchup, didn't do much better. Again, this is just tough. Inside out dribble, get into the gap, spin, finish. So, so skilled. KCP again. Again, anybody other than LeBron pretty much just got abused. I think LeBron needs to try to stay with him all 45 minutes that Jimmy plays. Needs to be matched up with LeBron's minutes. Kuzma didn't do well either. Jimmy planting in the paint. Little fade away off one leg. These are tremendous moves for sure. You see Robinson switched out, slipped out again. But Kuzma did a good job staying on Jimmy, but not a good job actually guarding him as Jimmy beats him to his strong right hand right away and then shows him the ball, gets him to jump, and then is able to go back to the floater to finish. Kuzma again, shot fake, goes for it. Jimmy puts it down in front, gets two more of his 14 free throw attempts. Markeith Morris trying to guard him one-on-one, -on -one, little rip through to his left. Again, strong at the basket. This one kind of just too tough, not really much you could do about that. Give credit to Jimmy just for stepping up and making big, big shots time and time again. Similar to this, maybe Markeith honestly did probably as good of a job as anybody except LeBron. Look at how badly he wants Jimmy to go back to his left shoulder, or take away his left shoulder, excuse me. Wants to make Jimmy go to his right shoulder here. Jimmy still isn't going to do it, though, and still gets back to that left shoulder. A little Kawhi hop there for the jumper. LeBron, again, that's a tough finish, probably as tough as Jimmy had all night. Again, really threw off LeBron's timing there. Kind of flipped it up so quickly, but what a move. And then passing the ball, obviously, 13 assists. Does a great job, always seeing the floor. Drawing two defenders on him and then finding the open man. Played a little of the BAM-type role 
was kind of like the five man dribbling around a lot to do these dribble handoffs. That's the one again that LeBron tries to switch out onto Hero, but if you don't do it right away, he's going to nail a three in your face. Finding Jay Crowder back cutting from the corner. And then the Heat went to this play a lot, especially down the stretch. With Duncan Robinson slipping out of a double side pick and roll. And then Kelly Olenek basically doing the same thing. Which again means pretty much no screen. LeBron needs to do a better job staying with Jimmy. Cutting off that drive. Because since he doesn't, Markeith has to come in to help to take away the layup. And now you've got Olenek popping where he's a pretty dead eye shooter. And that's a phenomenal pass from Jimmy Butler. Same type deal here. This time, though, Olenek's going to slip, taking advantage of Lakers switching everything again. Great read by him to slip out of it. And great read by Jimmy Butler to find the perfect pocket to deliver this pass and get Olenek a layup. Jimmy Butler, unbelievable in Game 3. Unreal performance. Thanks for watching. Make sure you thumb up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's see if the Lakers will make that adjustment and do what they can to Stop getting hurt on those slips and maybe keep LeBron on Jimmy more in game four.